Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and The Walking Dead Season 4 finale is this Sunday. So since I've already done a bunch of videos with XYZ predictions, I thought it would be really fun to ask a question in this video. How do you top the Season 3 finale and the mid-season finale without just repeating the same old stuff? You know, how do you raise the intensity level without just adding X number of guns, X number of tanks, X number of walkers? The answer is really simple. You just make things much more intimate, much more personal. You really have to change your core characters in ways that fundamentally alter the way you and I as the audience perceive them, as well as other characters on the show perceive them. Well, what does that mean? We have to re-examine the season 3 finale in order to understand and just compare that against where the characters are right now emotionally. Number 1. There was the governor. The black hat wearing villain. He was actually brought out after complaints that the show lacked a central villain for the audience to rally around. It totally worked and the show became even more popular. The mid-season finale really can be considered the end of his arc on the show. So what's going to take the place of the Darth Vader of Georgia? And what's going to take the place of the Andrea Milton element? You know, the really personal element. You can't just throw away that broad threat to the group, but you really do have to intensify the really intimate threat to someone you love. Number two, the comics. The source of all walkers. You totally can't have a story about the show without addressing the comic. The writers are literally adapting the comic to make episodes. You know, that being said, a lot of stuff gets changed for various reasons, which is where we find ourselves right now. We've got some new people in a new place, being led by a very ominous feeling Garrett character. Suddenly, it almost sounds like the exact same sequence of events is going to unfold. So here's what we can confirm right now. Robert Kirkman said that Gareth is a really interesting twist on a comic book character. If Abraham, Eugene, and Rosita are any indicator, the person Gareth resembles will look very close to someone in the comics that the actor playing him resembles. That could be one of any of at least four characters. Robert Kirkman really made it sound like that Gareth character is a spin on one person, not multiple comic book characters, so we can localize our guesses to people in the comic books based on where the story is right now, which really leads us to Hunters. On the other hand, Terminus is not something from the comic books, but it is the last stop before they go to Alexandria, so it does support that Hunters theory. Number three, the Terminus Hunters. So if you have this very similar situation to the season three finale unfolding, how do you do it differently in a way that does not just add more guns, more tanks, more walkers, and doesn't just swap that Darth Vader for another Sith Lord? I think it's really important to remember how the Andrea Milton situation unfolded. We never got to see him turn and then chow down on her. They chose not to show us that and instead focused more on the governor with his, you know, Death Star machine gun just mowing down people. So what I think will happen is, is they'll just shift focus and the largest portion of the story, the action, will be in that locked room. And when I say that, I'm just using that as a metaphor for something horrific. You know, something so unthinkable that you can't eat for a few days. You know, mass murder like the governor did during season three is really abstract, so it's a little bit easier to shake off. But Andrea's situation is just so much more personal, so it's just really hard to get out of your mind. Number four, the breaking point. Rick will totally be the one to break in this episode. That's what the description means. Rick comes face to face with shocking brutality that threatens everyone's lives. Essentially, it just means that he's going to have to take a page from the governor's book and eliminate whatever threat is at Terminus. He's been Farmer Rick for most of the season, but remember what Carol said before they split. You can be a Farmer Rick, you can't just be a Farmer. One of the reasons Carl lashed out at him in Episode 9 was because he'd just become so ineffectual as a result of this new chosen profession. There's this really old chess analogy, you know, the best move is to make no move. It just means that the best action that the characters could take is to take no action, but I feel like Walking Dead does not let its characters do that. You can't do that without paying a huge price. What does that mean in a practical sense? Well, it means Rick is going to brutally kill a lot of people in a really up close and personal way. If you want to see a good example of this in the comics, read issue 57. It deals with the Marauders, which I think are represented by Joe's group. I also think that, you know, brutality of Rick's is going to carry over into the people at Terminus. And number five, Terminus is totally not a good place. Even Scumbag Joe agrees, Terminus is bad news. That tells you everything you need to know about it. But there's also the similarities between Michonne's painting and Mary, and the fact that Mary is wearing a poncho that's very similar to the one Beth was wearing when she was kidnapped. Red warning lights flashing everywhere. 
So here's where we have to talk about threats to the group, you know, the big overarching threats. And even if the people at Terminus aren't carbon copies of the hunters, they're probably at least inspired by them, as in, you know, practicing cannibals, meaning that some of the survivors are probably going to get eaten, or at least partially eaten. This all bends a lot of stuff from the comics, but again, Terminus and Gareth are both totally new things that are just inspired by elements of the comics. The real conversation we need to be having at this point, though, is who's going to get eaten and who's going to get partially eaten. So, number six, final death predictions. Maggie is still totally my best guess based on all the rumors and things from the comics that have just been flipped. Remember, how do you top that scene with Andrea? You show it playing out in excruciating detail with someone even more precious to you. Which could be any number of people at this point. But Beth, Carol, Glenn, they're all marked. I think we all expect Rick to limp away from this again, but he could totally be one of those people that limps away minus a limb or two. So now it's your turn, let me know, what would you do to this finale to make it better than the season 3 finale and the prison massacre without just repeating events? Really the thing that I want to see most is Daryl rescue Beth and then just mow down a bunch of Terminus people. Hopefully he'll find a new poncho. Whenever he's wearing a poncho, his crit rating like doubles. It's like boom, headshot, boom, headshot. So in related news, I'll be posting my finale video after the episode airs. Be sure to subscribe below to get it. I'll also be doing a double giveaway. That's right, two people will get gift cards instead of just one. I'll also be doing a season five prediction video next week once I get through my Q&A. Right now, click here to catch up on this season and click here for my latest Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys this weekend. High fives.